Well, new strides in the road to recovery. Seven counties in the Mid Hudson region have entered phase three of reopening. So take a look. It means that indoor dining, nail salons, spas, and tattoo shops can reopen. And two more counties will join them tomorrow. Nassau and Suffolk County set to enter phase three when the Long Island region reopens. We have News 4's Mark Santia live in Port Chester with how businesses are faring there. Hey, Mark. Hey, Natalie, for the last two weeks here in Westchester at restaurants like Noches de Columbia here in Port Chester, folks have been allowed to have their meals outside. But now for the first time in months, you can dine inside. It's been a good day here at Noches de Colombia in Port Chester. Phase three means restaurants are allowed to serve customers outdoors and indoors with reduced capacity to allow for social distancing. That you can, you know, finally go to a place and just be inside. Um, you know, it just makes me feel like we're going back to normal. Making the drive more than an hour from New Jersey, Luz Bueno says the trip was well worth it, not only for the food and atmosphere, but seeing Noches de Colombia staff take safety protocols seriously gave her peace of mind. People here have been doing a really good job just keeping, you know, the distance and uh, cleaning the tables and making sure everybody's safe. You start to put a significant part of the economy back in place. Westchester County Executive George Latimer. But the businesses themselves now can start to get the kind of volume and the revenue they need to survive. Just call me when you're outside because I have to walk you in. Phase three also means groups of 25 can now meet. Tattoo parlors and nail salons are open again with safety measures. Here in Yonkers at Mimi's Nail Salon, it's Marinella Perez's birthday. Her manicure, a gift three months in the making. It's going great. My nails are done, and I'm pretty soon going to be doing my manicure, my pedicure, sorry, and we'll be out the door to celebrate. Back here live inside Noches de Columbia. The, the county exec says if the metrics continue, then Westchester will be moving into phase four shortly, and that would allow for larger gatherings as well as the opening of many outdoor ball fields. We're live in Port Chester on Mark Santia, News 4 New York. All right, Mark, things are moving along. Thank you for that. Well, in a historic move, alternate side parking is changing. Drivers will now only need to move their cars once a week this summer. <coughs> Rules are still suspended until this Sunday, though. Then, starting on Monday, crews will clean the streets no more than once per week. That's down from two days or more in many neighborhoods. Streets will be cleaned on the latest day posted on the street sign. So that means if you move your vehicle on Tuesday and Friday, Friday will now be the only day you'll have to move it, Chuck. Okay, good news. New Jersey's health commissioner says the state is seeing a concerning pattern of more young people testing positive with the coronavirus. 22% of those tested positive, uh, who, who tested positive with the virus this month, are between the ages of 18 and 29. That's compared to 12% for that age group back in April. Meantime, Governor Murphy announced that playgrounds, amusement parks, and water parks will reopen on July 2nd, all at 50% capacity. Indoor dining and casinos will also reopen that day at 25% capacity. Connecticut residents can now return to the DMV. Starting today, some in-person services are back open. That includes appointments for new licenses and IDs, along with renewals. The DMV has been closed since March, and as a result, the DMV issued a 180-day extension for any renewal that expired between March 10th and June 30th. In less than three hours before the polls close now in New York's primary, voters are choosing their Democratic pick for president, along with their candidates for 33 seats in the state assembly and the Senate, all while social distancing, too. Now, a number of incumbent House Democrats are facing primary challengers, among them Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Elliot Engel, and Yvette Clark. The House seats of Republican Peter King and Democrats Nita Lowy and Jose Serrano are up for grabs after their retirement announcements. News for government affairs reporter Melissa Russo is live at Jackson Heights with the issues voters ran into today. Melissa? Chuck, one issue is all the voters who say they requested absentee ballots that never arrived. And if you're at home now watching and you're one of those voters and you didn't get your absentee ballot and you live in New York City, you still have three hours to show up and vote in person. Another big issue, it happened here in Corona, was when voters showed up in person to cast their ballot and they were given an incomplete ballot. My name is Christian Zapata. I'm from Corona, Queens. When Christian Zapata and his mother showed up to vote here at PS14 in Corona, they were given only half a ballot. We were only given one ballot for one particular race. Um, 
I follow politics to the best of my ability and I knew that there were other races, uh, races that were particularly important for us here in Queens. Christian asked the poll workers, where's the other half? The part with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's race and the other one for Queensboro president. He pressed on and insisted that there were other races. After some pushback, they called their local assembly member, Catalina Cruz, who helped them fix the problem and cast a complete set of votes. I said, you don't leave till they give you your ballot. I then got a call from my own sister, who lives in a completely different neighborhood, where the same thing happened. And I said, you don't leave until you get the ballot. From Queens to Brooklyn, we've heard from voters who say they were given only one page of a two-page ballot. It's pretty frustrating. Samantha Allison of Crown Heights was baffled when her ballot had no presidential primary page. I realized pretty quickly that the presidential candidates were not listed anywhere on the ballot. I spoke to four different polling officials and brought this to their attention, and each time I was met pretty dismissively with, it's one ballot and you just vote for the names on the ballot. After some pushback from poll workers, Samantha and some other early bird voters cast the one-page ballots and left, knowing something wasn't quite right. How many everyday people left the voting location without being able to have that second sheet? How many people? This is unacceptable, and I am going to be demanding a full investigation. This cannot happen. Later this morning, Samantha called the Board of Elections, which confirmed it was a mistake, and promised to get back to her to let her know if she could come back and finish voting. It's pretty disappointing and frustrating that I still haven't been able to cast my full vote. But so far, it seems like Samantha is out of luck based on what the New York City Board of Elections is telling me. They say it may be too late for her to go back and vote again. They say that they trained their poll workers in advance. This never should have happened. And they also sent teams to various locations throughout the city as word of these problems arose. But already, the New York City Campaign Finance Board is holding hearings to find out just what went wrong. We're live in Corona, Queens. Melissa Russo, News 4 New York. Oh, Melissa, what a nice...